Hello and welcome to a Taylor's Tales podcast. This is Chris's Corner. I'm your host, Chris Taylor, and welcome back to a brand new episode. This week, I'm going to be talking about the crazy transfer market in the football league, or as the Americans like to call it, which are they're incorrect, by the way, soccer. Um, it has been an absolute mayhem, like crazy mayhem market. I think this year's been brilliant so far. I think there's been some solid business being done across all clubs. I want to start off with some of the business that's been done. Let's talk about that quickly. Get it over and done with the past is the past, but let's get it in straight off the mark. So we've got Nunes to Liverpool, Haaland to Man City, Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal, uh, then you had Richarlison to Tottenham. So those four clubs have made some serious signings. Chelsea have made Sterling their major marker, and Man U are yet to make a major marking signing. The top six clubs so far have made it an extremely intriguing uh, transfer market because of the bold moves being made and actually I think the battle for top four this year is going to be so, so tough and it's going to be such slight wins, I think. I genuinely think it's going to be a a battle for you know a free for all in terms of who's going to be able to get top four. Obviously, you're going to have City winning the league and then uh, Liverpool chasing them up in the second place. But the other two spots are up for grabs, and I think that the business being done right now is really going to going to match that and going to make sure that that is clear at the beginning of this season. I think we're going to be running hot from the, the get go when it comes down to the season start get starting on my birthday i believe on august the 5th um and from no august the 6th i'm probably yeah it's a saturday august the 6th and august the 5th is friday anyway so it's going to be an interesting league some of the rumors going about so far let's get into those ronaldo wanting to leave man united we've all heard this we all already know that for those who aren't aware that ronaldo wants to leave because he's playing europa league football next season not champions league and he is a champions league player no doubt with the 25 goals he put in last season he has still got the shine that he has even at the age of 37 years old and so he's looking for a move well recent news has been made that Chelsea no longer want to make a move on Ronaldo and neither do Bayern Munich so those two major like the two main suitors that Hodges meant Hodges <laughs> Georges Mendes was going to try and sell Ronaldo from Man United to these two major clubs are no longer available and no longer interested Bayern saying that because it doesn't suit their styles well i say style their philosophy of signing certain players i think believing in smaller contracts and paying less money is on their minds as well as chelsea having made the the bad the work probably one of the worst transfer new transfer moves of all time in romelu lukaku and that's as a Chelsea fan, I can say that without a doubt. It was the probably the worst transfer move of all time. And now that we've got rid of one of our superiors uh, in the Roman Abramovich era staff, we've removed some of those people from the back room. I'm hoping to see some of the business being a little bit smarter and a little bit more longevity rather than short term snap, snap, snap. With Ronaldo, I believe he's been offered for MLS and for uh, an Arabian club, 227 million contract for a year in uh, the Arabic League, I believe. And this has been backed by uh, (laughs) Fabrizio Romanov. (laughs) And he's made this clear that Ronaldo does not want to join the MLS or the Arabic League. And in this case, he wants to stay in the top flight Europe, European leagues. Italy, I doubt he'll move back there. Juve, AC Milan and Inter Milan cannot afford him. And so it will be with either the Premier League, the French League, Liga. I don't think Paris Saint-Germain will be able to afford him due to their huge wage bill at the moment. And I don't think anyone in the Bundesliga is going to be able to put that in. And so it's either going to be the Liga or Premier League. And I, I, I genuinely think that Ronaldo will stay at Man United, not only because of his wage, but also because it will keep him, keep him in a competitive league. And maybe next season he'll be able to get some sort of monstrous contract from a separate third party in the MLS or a, or a, a country that's willing to, to pay the big bucks. Uh, where he will go into you know the, the retirement years from the age of 38 to, to 40 it would make sense it would be the smart financial decision as well as uh keeping his what i would say 
his history, his legacy intact. If he continues down the Man United path, we may see a slow deterioration because of the lack of support and the lack of vision that the club has at the moment. So, Ronaldo, I predict, most likely to just stay at Man United for the season. Uh, he will see the rest of his contract out and then we'll move on a free in the following summer. Prediction, but I think it's a solid prediction for Matt Ronaldo. Moving on from Ronaldo, uh, we've got Matthias De Ligt, who Chelsea were eyeing up at the beginning, but I believe because of the huge uh, sum of money they were asking for, 80 to 120 million, that is unlikely to be paid for, and Chelsea have looked further into separate centre-backs who they will be signing and I will talk about later. Matthias De Ligt will most likely aim to move to Bayern Munich. I don't know how Bayern Munich are going to be able to sum the money for uh, De Ligt, being that 80 to 120 million. I don't understand how they aren't willing to sign Ronaldo but are willing to pay the money for uh, De Ligt, maybe because of his youth and being only 22, 23 years old and they see a future with him. However, I do believe that that huge sum of money that they normally don't pay for players. If you look at a lot of their signings, it's been either free transfers or smaller uh, fees. The biggest transfer they ever have is, is Sane, for instance, and he is still 26 years old and still has many years in front of him. So if they were to do it, I believe it would be in the range of 60 to 70 million to make him their most expensive player ever, most likely. Uh, the backing be behind this for Delict is that he's per made personal terms with Bayern Munich and it's all down to Juventus and Bayern Munich being able to make the agreement for that big sum of money because that is exactly what Juve will be looking for and they'll most likely have to look elsewhere to be able to find an immediate replacement within this short period of time. Centre-backs are extremely valuable this summer with many clubs looking for them. Chelsea are looking for three alone. We may have already signed one with uh, Koulibaly and that for me is a fantastic signing. 31 years old, £34 million. Pounds, an amazing sum for an extremely experienced defender as we've seen with Thiago Silva. Fantastic Fantastic in terms of his age, the experience he's brought, and his consistency and lack of injury. We need Koulibaly to do the same thing if he can do that on this four year contract that he's most likely going to sign within the next 24 hours and be in Los Angeles to be made appearance like Sterling. We'll see what happens, but I do believe that this is done deal business and that Koulibaly will be moving to Chelsea. Fantastic move for Chelsea. One defender down, two to go. The Nathan Ake deal is off. Uh, and due to, I believe, personal terms being agreed between Ake and Chelsea, but Man City and Chelsea could not come to an agreement. Uh, I believe this to be kind of, for me personally, I think it was a good move for Chelsea. I believe that Ake, having been proven in the Premier League and having played for multiple clubs in the Premier League and being a previous Chelsea player in the first place, would have slotted straight in to that position and could have been relied upon. However, um, that has not been made possible. I believe that we're going for Kimpembe instead, which I think may be a riskier move for the club, seeing as he has only played in League 1 uh, and isn't technically, sorry, let me say that again, the Ligue 1, <laughs> and I don't think he's been proven, he's played for PSG, and PSG, but it's a Farmers League, isn't it, it's literally just the one club, one or two, and they lost to Monaco a couple of seasons ago, and to somehow to Lille as well, which is absolute madness, so I still consider it to be a unproven player in terms of playing in multiple leagues and being able to show that diversity but also consistency. The stats say that he is one of the best uh, defenders to have in being in the 1% percentile for being aggressive and being a, a great tackler on the, and as well as playing for France being a good defender there however there's been sources saying that he is unreliable and that is why uh, PSG have a leaky ship as we see at the back there and have conceded very sloppy goals uh, through both the Champions League and Liga. Chelsea have also gone for uh, I believe to be their third striker to, to be f filled in. So now that we've done Kimpe now that we've done Kulabali, Kimpembe is next. We were going to get Ake. I do not know who that third player would be. Uh, I genuinely don't believe that anyone in the Chelsea club at the moment can really, you know, those two slots of where Christensen and Rudiger were going to be have now been potentially filled by those two players. If we were going to make a third signing, they would be a squad rotation player, most likely. And that is why Ake made the most sense. However, uh, we do have some younger players 
who could fill that role. We do have um, Malang Sar, who can play uh, left centre-back as well as left-back. Uh, this is why I do believe that Alonso should be sold from Chelsea to Barcelona, because we then have already a, a left-back as a backup already. And we know that Chilwell is going to be playing first-team football, and so Alonso will be put back into the bench and I doubt he'll want to play that because he is a known want to be first team player and especially being in the, th the age of 31 years old that is uh, those prime years that you do not want to lose to just being sat on the bench. You've also got Aspilicueta potentially leaving and moving to Barcelona and so you have a third squad player who is playing in the defence that needs to be replaced. For Chelsea I believe that Delict would have been ideal as well for future generations, but maybe we'll rely upon squad players for them for the future. With play, players like Conor Gallagher and Bro Broha being able to play this season under Thomas Tuchel, it will be an extremely interesting to see the younger players as are seeing the success from James and from also seeing from Mason Mount. It is a team that could have such potential. I hope to see a better season from Pulisic as well, seeing as he is now the poster boy for the club seeing as it's being taken over by American owners and I believe that he could still have the potential that he had at Borussia Dortmund and I hope to see him fulfill it in the following season and that Tuchel utilizes the tactics that he was going to use and that now that Romelu Lukaku is gone we can fully just go down the Tuchel vision and this is the season where Chelsea have to prove themselves. Moving on to Lewandowski, uh, Lewandowski potentially going to Barcelona however I want to pose this question to you as the listener and the viewer. How and where are Barcelona getting their money from? It has been an extremely interesting saga for Barcelona, having clearly signed Rafinha and competing with Chelsea to be able to sign him from Leeds. Uh, Rafinha making the agreement with Barcelona over four months ago on personal terms and only wanted to go to Barcelona and getting Deco, his agent, to be able to go back and forth between Leeds and Barcelona to make that happen. However, Barcelona are in financial crisis at the moment and so their wage bill is quite big for a club that no longer has any serious resource backing as well as selling their rights for the next 25 years or something along those lines to TV rights and it's it's absolutely insane what they're willing to do to be able to pay for the players now rather than for the future of the club. It's you know, very good for Lionel Messi, who's left from Barcelona. There may have been a relationship and history there, but I believe it's a smart move to leave, seeing as Barcelona look to be like a sinking ship. They may have the potential to play well next season with the current players that they have, but I don't know whether they'll be able to continue to be able to compete with the top clubs in Europe when their finances are just going down the toilet. Barcelona have also are forcing De Jong out of the club it looks like to Man United for 65 million euros with add-ons and it seems to me that this is a financial decision rather than a quality of De Jong. De Jong wants to stay at the club, he wants to be at Barcelona however he is now having to move to a Man U purely because Barcelona cannot afford his 300,000 euros a week wage bill on top of all the other players that they've got. They're also bringing in Rafinha, who will be paid, I, I imagine, quite a high wage bill. And so there's not really a lot of selling being done at Barcelona at the moment. And they are bringing in a lot of players. They've already brought in Kessie as well as Christiansen. Both were on free transfers, but that's still more wage bills to be paid. The question is, where are the outgoings, apart from Leng Lenglet to Tottenham on loan? It brings up the question as how long can Barca keep this up? Is it one season? Is it two seasons? We will see in the future and I am truly excited to see where they take it. Real Madrid on the other hand have made big signing with Antonio Ru Rudiger who was a fantastic signing from Chelsea. They've also still got some amazing young players in the midfield now with Tashuma from France. I believe that was along the lines of 58 to uh, 65 million euros for him. Fantastic by he is the the future central midfielder of the club, seeing if they've got an aging midfield. Uh, they've also got, I believe, from last season, I can't Tusong Tusong or some of those lines. He played no come. Kamavenga, that's it, Kamavenga, who did amazing in the Champions League last year, and I think he is one of the future midfielders as well as Tashuma 
at the club and it's great to see Real Madrid making some smart decisions in the youth players of today's football rather than just splashing out the cash like they did with their Eden Hazard and I think they've learned from that mistake and are looking to invest for the future rather than just buying big and seeing that fail and it is a new non-Galacticos season at Real Madrid. Hopefully they also do not go into financial crippling debt like Barcelona. So whether Lewandowski will move to Barcelona, I believe, will be down to whether Barca can make a bid that Bayern are willing to admit or whether Bayern are going to let him go at all to any other club. Chelsea potentially could hijack the move, depending on whether Barcelona are unable to pay the fee that Bayern are willing to accept. If so, I think for Thomas Tuchel, it would be an excellent strike force to have if he was to be placed in. However, it could be like Cristiano Ronaldo and Ron- Romelu Lukaku in the sense that he may not suit the style of play that Tuchel would be looking to play at Chelsea. And I believe that Lewandowski, while a absolute predator when it comes down to scoring goals, would be looking to be out-and-out striker and playing every single week week in win out week out which I don't think Tuchel would be looking at seeing as he normally plays a centre forward slash false nine and Lewandowski is an out and out striker which doesn't exactly suit the style of play. So I believe and predict that Lewandowski will stay at Bayern Munich most likely or Barcelona will break the bank and pay 45 to 50 million euros for Lewandowski and therefore financially cripple themselves even further down the drain and they will have to sell De Jong without any hesitation if they want to make that happen and De Jong will most likely have an unhappy <laughs> season at Manchester United. So we've also got Martinez to Manchester United, the centre-back from Ajax. I believe that he's being reunited with the current and new manager at the club and it's it's a a smart piece of business for Man United because they're trying to plug the holes of their defence. Again, another leaky ship. But it's also pl- buying players who want to play Europa League football, seeing as they did not make it into the Champions League spots. It does not look good at the moment. And while having new fresh leaders at the club, I do, even with the 4 0 win over Liverpool in pre season. I don't know whether Man United will be able to make up the ground that Tottenham, Chelsea and Arsenal are making up in the top four. Moving on to Tottenham and Arsenal. Tottenham and Arsenal, like I said, they've made some serious signings throughout the transfer market. They've also made some seriously good moves for players on freeze. Tottenham Hotspur signing Perisic, an absolutely fantastic buy from Antonio Conte in the terms that he's looking for a squad player who can consistently play on that left side of the field and put in some assists as well as some high quality goals and be ruthless in speed and consistency throughout the season. A great piece of business there. Langland, like I said, moving into centre-back on loan from Barcelona, a backup to or potentially taking over as a centre-back role. Tottenham also a leaky ship at the back and don't have a solid defence. They require uh, a solid centre-back who's reliable. And maybe Lang Lang can you know, fill that role. He is 28 years old and he has experience under Barcelona and other clubs. But I don't know whether that will be enough for Tottenham at the back. They've got an absolutely fantastic strike force now in Richarlison, uh, Son and Harry Kane which is going to be incredible next season. It will be a fight for the Golden Boot this season between Mohamed Salah, Harry Kane and many others throughout the season, such as Haaland and Nunez. I doubt Nunez is going to actually be in the contention for the Golden Boot. I believe, actually, that it will be between Mohamed Salah and Harry Kane, most likely. I see that Haaland and Nunez will have to adapt to the Premier League, and it will be a hard adaption because it is a much tougher league than both the... uh, Portuguese League and the German Bundesliga. So with Chelsea, Arsenal and Tottenham fighting, let's go through some of the squad players as a comparison. The potential in all of the clubs are very different, but I want to go through uh, Arsenal's first because actually I look at their youth squad and I look at some of the players that need to be replaced. For instance, Tierney recently got injured in pre-season Arsenal will require a new left back Zinchenko is on is potentially on the market and that would be a fantastic piece of business Man City again having to sell a player in order to be able to uh, release some of these squad players who potentially aren't getting the first team football that they want and require 
but at the same time losing a very capable player that would make up very well for Arsenal in terms of Zinchenko's ability to get crosses in and to get those solid assists and potential goals for the Arsenal players. They've also got Gabriel Jesus, like I said earlier. They've got uh, reliable players in Saka, Odegaard, Smith-Rowe, and new player Vieira from the Portuguese league. I'll be very interested to see how he does this season in terms of playing consistently and being able to make up for the standard in the league. They've also got players like Xhaka who could potentially move as well as Tororia. If it was like Torore, I should be saying. Uh, and they've got Martinelli as well as Nikita and Pep, Pep, here's the thing, I think they should sell Nicolas Pepe, I don't think he should still be at the club, it is kind of a, a, a weird signing as well for Marquinhos, a centre-back who needs to be proven in the league, but there's a lot of young blood in Arsenal who want to play under Arteta, and we'll see whether that is the potential to them being extremely successful this season. So, that's Arsenal, Tottenham, Spurs, However, whoever you want, <laughs> however you want to play them, their team also looking quite tough this season. Richarlison isn't on the team sheet at the moment, but he is there. You got Hugo Lloris, who I believe is to be a little bit old for his age in the team squad. They may need to look for a new goalkeeper next season, although he is still consistent. Matt Doherty is he really, uh, you know, a good enough player to play in Tottenham? Regulong, again, inconsistent, but still there. You've still got you got Son, you've got Harry Kane, and you've obviously got Richarlison. But there's a lot of players in here that I look at, apart from Kulisevsky, Morea, and also Rodrigo um, Blacker, uh, Betancourt, who's also proven as well. There's a lot of sort of players here who aren't exactly Premier League players. I think Lucas Moura's underrated as well. I think he needs more game time. I imagine that at some point he'll want to move purely off the basis that, you know, he's a good player and he could potentially uh, be a little bit more consistent in another team, first team, getting that consistent, you know, play time. And the same could be said. That's why Bergvine's moved for 27 million. Another good piece of business for Ajax, who have sold Haller to Borussia Dortmund and require more of a strike force to be able to make it in the Champions League. Uh, well, make more of a run next season in the Champions League. But Ajax have made some fantastic business over the years. They are rolling in the cash from the development that they've made through their youth system. Uh, as someone who's went to Amsterdam recently, I can understand why the local area is surrounded by football play pitches that are high quality and clearly show the ability to develop lots of young players into high quality footballers and there's great equipment and consistent football for them to play on a regular basis. It does remind me of England in the sense that you've got these five-a-side pitches that are available for everyone to play on and it can increase the populace of the footballing and the quality of that football being played. You've also got players in Chelsea squad that I'm going to go through now as well who I believe to be Let's, let's go through some of the players that I think should be sold as well, like I did. Ariza Balaga, for his own sake, should seek a, another club to be able to get that first team football. He would be awesome to get off the wage bill for Chelsea as well because his contract is far too big for the player that he is. Um, he is not playing first team. He is not the first choice goalkeeper and his salary is too big for what he is getting, especially when it, I believe that Mendy is just about getting a little bit more than him. Alonso, yep, should seek other ways. We've got Trevor Challa, but I forgot to mention him. I believe that he, this is why we shouldn't th seek the third centre-back, because we already have him. He's proven, he's a great player, he can play alongside Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva backs him. I believe that having him at centre-back role in a more consistent season would be very good for the club. Like I said, young players having the potential for this year. Obviously, we've got Aspie, who I believe I said on the way out. Malang Sar could potentially be used this season. Ampadu, I think, is a versatile player who maybe could be given the potential to play this season. We'll see in preseason how well he performs. Emerson should be let go as well. I, I think he's not. He's Again, these players taking up the wage bill is crazy. Barbara Rahman, crazy that he's still at the club. Jorginho needs to be let go. Ross Barkley, again, not good enough. 
crazy to see that some of these players are still at the club as well. Ziek doesn't want to be there. Kennedy needs to be let go as well. Um, that's why he needs to be let go. But apart from that, the rest of the players seem to be solid, reliable players. I'm never sure about Loftus-Cheek. I think he's been given a lot of uh, time by multiple managers and given that place as playtime at Chelsea to prove himself. Under Saar, he did really well and proved that he could be a good centre midfielder. But I don't know whether he can do the same for Thomas Tuchel. And we'll see that in the, in the coming season. So that is all the current transfer news for the Premier League and for this crazy transfer market across Europe. It's been so many like sagas going on from Rafinha to Lewandowski to Ronaldo to um, Chelsea making like three different uh, signings at all at the same time. It's like a domino effect across the league. Uh, I am extremely excited to see uh, the Premier League this season starting in August. I believe we are now halfway through July. By the end of July, I think there'll be more, even more business done in the coming weeks and we will see some of these moves solidified and made certain throughout the club. I believe Chelsea this season may have a tough season. Based off the signings they've made and based off the club, it could be a fourth spot we get this season and not competing with Liverpool and Manchester City. It is the new era. Maybe some of the signings may make may change my mind. However, at the moment, based off what I've seen, it's probably going to be fourth place for Chelsea with either Tottenham or Arsenal pipping us to third place. So... This has been a Taylor's Tales podcast. This has been Chris's Corner. I've been your host, Chris Taylor. And as always, I hope to see you this time next week. Bye now.